my friends, my name is Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales, and welcome to a beginner's tutorial guide for Total War Three Kingdoms. I've done many of these beginner's guides on the channel. You'll see an image of some of them on the screen right now. If you are a brand new Total War player, then this might be the video for you if you are interested in this particular game. But like I said, I have other ones I've done on the channel as well, from Warhammer to Attila to Thrones of Britannia to Shogun 2 and many, many more. If you are a player who has played, say, 50 odd hours of a campaign in Total War, or, you know, has got experience in many of the other titles of Total War, then this video probably won't help you that much. But if you were a brand new Total War player, somebody who has picked up Total War Three Kingdoms and this is your first or, or possibly your first Total War game, then you might find quite a lot in this video that will be quite helpful. What I will do, I'll start off by talking about the different things that you can get on here the, via campaign, battles and so forth, and then I'll actually go into a campaign and show you some of the campaign features and also some of the battle uh, mechanics as well. If you like the sound of that, and uh, you think this video is going to be helpful towards you, I would love it if you could drop a like on the video. That would actually help things out quite a bit. Anyway, we'll start off. So you got campaign. Pretty self-explanatory. Continue. I've got one for you with Kongron. New, load, or multiplayer, and that'll take you to a multiplayer campaign with your friend, or, you know, versus campaign, that sort of thing. Battles, you can do a new battle. Multiplayer battles. And you can check all your replays from here as well. And then in the extra um, category, you have your options, so your graphics, your audio, your camera, etc. It's all on here. Credits, and then DLC. So I'll take you to the Steam store. At the moment, they have the Yellow Turban DLC, so I won't really go into that too much because it's not much there. You know, this is a brand new game, but it's all on here. And if you move your cursor from left to right, the screen does move as well. Not really much to show on here. Best thing to do is just go in and check each one out, um, whether you're more of a multiplayer kind of person or more of a campaign person with multiplayer. You can search via the search bar, battle types you're looking for, land battles, that sort of thing, wall sieges, friends who, um, uh, you know, friends and uh, you can find on here and, and passworded games. You can host a battle as well, pretty self-explanatory on there. Or if you want to just do a new custom battle or a historical battle, or even a ranked battle, it's all on here for you as well. But we're going to do a new campaign. So we click on new, then it brings up various raw lords. So from left to right, you have your coalitions. You have Sao Sao, which is easy and recommended. You have Liu Bei, you have Sun Jian, Gong Sun Jian, Yuan Shao, and Yuan Shu. By the way, I do apologize if I am butchering some of the pronunciations. I am not a native Chinese speaker. For governors, we have Kong Rong, we have Liu Biao and Mark Teng. For outlaws, we have Zhang Yan and Zheng Zhan. And then Yellow Turbans, this is a DLC, so if you buy the game within the first week or pre order the game, you get the DLC for free. But um, as of this video now, you have to purchase this DLC. You got He Ye, Gong Du, and Huang Shao. It tells you like the starting situations and if it's very hard or hard or rarer. So I would, for my first campaign, if we go through, I think probably go for Sao Sao, to be honest with you. He is the only one that's on easy and recommend. So for this video, we will click on him. Chaos forges agents of power. Tao Tao watches dynasties fall and tyrants rise. He has seen power slip into the hands of the undeserving. And through the chaos, plots a path back to order by his hand. Okay, so the advisor will tell you a little bit about the character, or Tao Tao. Um, and you get the character on the left-hand side. Again, it tells you what you've seen already, but it also gives you a bit more. So he's a commander, excels at expiring friendly troops, but weaker in melee. Best group with retinues is melee cavalry, and then you can see his specialty is minus 10% upkeep for his cav, and plus 15% for military supplies. In the green is where he actually starts, which is here. Characters of note, which are mentioned throughout the description, are plotted around. So Huang Shao, Yun Shao, and He Yi are all plotted around here. The red obviously signify an enemy, green being uh, you yourself or, or friends, grey being sort of neutral around you, and then 
Red, of course, the tyrant that is Dong Zhao. Credibility incites proxy war. So proxy war trigger between two other independent parties without your direct involvement as one of the war's participants. Influences diplomatic relations. Again, so relations between two factions are determined by the diplomatic attitude to one another. Good relations will mean a higher chance for constructive deals and that war is less likely. And credibility recovers over time. So um, this resource automatically increases each turn. So these are just some specializations that the faction of Sao Sao actually has. Um, his play style focuses on diplomatic manipulation. So bending others to your will is what you try to do with him. Very diplomatic heavy kind of campaign with him. Unique features, so he has Tiger and Leopard Cavalry, which is Shock Cav. He has Heavy Tiger and Leopard Cavalry as well. Farming garrisons for improved food and replenishment and also Tunisian conscription for more of a thing for your recruits and stuff raising new troops from the population so these are some unique features and then noteworthy characters we have uh, Jaho Dun and Jaho Yan two of these here general type vanguard and champion and a little bit of a, a description of what's going on in the world at the moment as well so you we can bring up your options here so I've got on hard difficulty and hard uh, hard battle difficulty hard campaign uh, basically what you need to know is if you're on legendary battle realism kicks in so that means that you don't get the mini map on the on the uh, on the screen when you're fighting. The AI will be a bit more aggressive on the campaign and also in battle usually. And um, so if you're going for a real challenge, legendary is what you're going to go for. Um, basically, the higher up you go, the more buffs the AI will have. Uh, for example, if you're on say normal or easy, one of these, you might have um, you you might not have any diplomatic penalties at all or population penalties or that sort of thing or, or you know negative negative happiness that sort of thing whereas if you're up here like a legendary you might get like minus five um population happiness you know negative that sort of thing so um up to you probably you know if you're brand new total war I'd, I'd go on normal 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 um i tend to play on usually on a hard i do a hard campaign first on a new game and then i'll go into very hard afterwards once i'm comfy and if I am feeling a bit cocky, I'll try a legendary. I'm not the best of Total War players, although I have done a couple of legendary campaigns on the channel in the past. But generally, I start off on hard, go up to very hard, and try it from there. Because legendary, you know, it's, even though it's, it can be fun and challenging, um, it can be a, a bit annoying sometimes. So for this, because it's brand new, you know, uh, and the purpose of the video is for a brand new Total War player, as I keep saying, we're going to go normal, normal. We're going to have... No advice to help, but I'll show you something in the, in the actual campaign that will be useful. So once you click close, you have an option here for Romance. So Romance of the Three Kingdoms, it tells you a little bit about it by here. It's currently selected, and basically um, it's more of a character-centric, a bit more like Warhammer, if you will. Total War Warhammer and Warhammer 2, where um, the characters will have, you know, there's a parallel layer of character versus character in combat, in which generals must take bold action to prevent enemy characters from devastating friendly units. Uh, characters increase in rank, they become increasingly resilient, but what once would have killed them will only wound them now. Whereas if you go for records of the Three Kingdoms, a general will have like a retinue with him, so it'll be like a general's bodyguard, like in sort of Medieval 2 or Shogun 2, for example, um, you know, riding by the side of him. And this it's is for your more traditional Total War uh, player. It's up to you. If you're more of a Warhammer player, you might prefer Romance. If you're more of a normal total war based player of a strategy records might be your thing we pick romance for the purpose of this once you click confirm and you're happy to, with everything else you've got here you click on start it'll take you to a little video which i will skip but there'll be a little video that will play it'll give you like your, your intro to the faction and, and the state of china as it is and then the campaign basically starts so i'll make a quick edit here and i will see you on the campaign map embers rise China is in turmoil. The great empire of the Han, stretching back ages beyond counting, is being devoured by corruption. The yellow turbans, thousands strong, began raising their banners in rebellion and seizing commanderies across the realm. In response, generals loyal to the emperor rose up and put down the rebellion. Yet despite the... 
The flames have run their course. Luo Yang is nothing but rubble now. It is the work of the tyrant Dong Zhuo, who now wields power unchecked. He absconds with the emperor in tow. He is barbaric, but not altogether unwise. As long as he controls the court, he controls the empire. In peace, I shall be an able subject. In chaos, a crafty hero. What of the coalition, my lord? They have... The coalition is finished. They have lost their bite. But perhaps they can be rallied into something resembling their old strength. It seems that I must be the blade of China's justice. There is no other who can. Man's span of life, whether long or short, depends not on heaven alone. And there we have it. So that's the sort of um, little intro it gives you uh, with the characters and stuff going forward. And we are starting off with a note by here saying, Establish your power. Lord Chao Cao, ha, you have been cast out, branded an enemy of the Empire. It is clear that only you have the capability to end Dong Zhou's tyranny and bring peace. You can use the surging population and pliable peasantry of your homelands to your advantage. Whilst vulnerable foes to the North may make expansion their beneficial. The time has come to increase your prestige and influence, then unite what has been divided. Be wary of Yuan Shu to the west and Tiao Kuan to the east. Claim the neighboring Han Empire region. So this is like a mission, basically. And mission issued by here. Pursued by Dong Zhou's men, Cao Cao prepares to fight. So it basically tells you what the lady just said at the top, saying that uh, Dong Zhou is a tyrant, blah, 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 blah. And then engage the following general's army in battle, Yuan Huan, which is right in front of you here. So this is a mission you get straight away. Every faction has one. And my reward is taste of victory. So for three turns, I get plus 30 military supplies across my faction and plus five morale across my faction. We'll get to that in a moment because that's going to be the battle that I'm going to show you in today's uh, video. And this is what the screen looks like. So if I use the, um, the, the scroller wheel on the mouse, I can go all the way out or I can go all the way in like that. So if I go all the way out and then I click on the left uh, mouse button, I can actually rotate the map like this, which is quite nice. And if I hold down the mouse wheel, I can go all the way around China like this. Everything that you can't see is covered by a fog of war. But if you send agents, you no know, units, armies, that sort of thing around your characters, you will discover more of the map. Also, if you get agreements, trade agreements with factions, you'll again see more of the map. So you can see you've got these by here. Hei Yi, Coalition, and Huang Shao. So it's also a story based, I guess, so you can you can sort of read them. These are the three things that were at the start of the campaign that are on here. Dong Zhou shows you where he is. Faction capital's up there. The Han Empire is in red, and it's right next to us by here. They've got um, the red is obviously factions that don't like you. Liao Dei is somebody who is again interesting to speak to, but he is neutral. So that's also interesting so red is enemy gray is neutral you can see law yang is uh imperial city is actually grayed out as well and then green is obviously yourself i think blue is uh, when they're friendly so they're the different colors you have to be wary of so i'm going to do a top about everything on the screen right now so harvest 190 turn one this is the basically the turn based um, that you get in, in Total War. Usually it's in the bottom right, but for this particular game they have it here. So turn one, two, turn two, etc. And the years will obviously go up on the map. I can start off with 3,000 gold and I'm making 662 a turn. And it gives you a nice breakdown when you hover over it, telling you the income, taxation, and family estates bring in so much. The expenditure of the army and salary, and that's my total, which is nice, simplistic, I like it. Food is very important, not only because it helps feed your, your your people and your armies and stuff, but you can also use it as a tradable resource in the diplomacy, which I will show you very soon. And again, like you can see, plus five income from peasantry at the moment, and I got plus two reserves. I got, I'm on two, which is good. Basically, if you're on anything below zero, 
you're a negative and you'll start suffering negative penalties but the more food surplus you get the better the best thing to do is to get lots of good trade and to take regions that will increase your food and then resources you can see by here current trade influence is 100 i don't have anything at the moment but once you start getting the campaign underway you will start getting that uh that built up quite quickly i got three things on the right hand on the left hand side sorry right here mission issued it brings up what we've seen already so i want to get rid of it i can just uh, right click on it establish your power it brings that up again just click off it once i'm happy i can right click it and again ancillaries gain this is very important i click on this so i've gained the area which is plus eight authority plus eight satisfaction and plus 15 trade influence at the moment me talking about this you're probably thinking what am i on about but i will show you in a second ceremonial stone axe plus eight instinct plus eight satisfaction plus five melee damage for all melee cavalry and plus five melee damage for infantry and then black thoroughbred which is a horse again giving me uh, a charge bonus and cunning and, and stuff like that so ancillaries you get them from winning battles progressing in the campaign fighting other lords and stuff and they can be quite useful they are used to customize your characters so if i click on characters down by here you can either do it by clicking Control and f2 or just clicking the button it'll bring up all my characters i have six characters in total i have chow chow and i have xiao dun but i also at the court i have lady bian xiao ren xiao song and xiao hao yan i do apologize again for pronunciation so um this is quite useful um harmony and disharmony uh you can see like you know people he likes and, and passes by and that sort of thing this little face which you don't get on the leader because obviously you're the leader but for the other characters you click on the over their face or hover over the face you've got satisfaction it tells you negatives and positives it's out of 100 the higher it is the better it is you want generally you want you know generals that like you and unlike others if there's disharmony and stuff then they, they could possibly lead to effect to another faction so you need to keep an eye on that 56 is okay to start off with but the higher i get that the better if you fight more battles together and win then it generally goes up you can see 43 for this person 65 is green pretty good for you and then 55 and then it goes up again to 66 so i think anything over the 60 or above is generally green you get lots of yellows i think i think below 30 is red so there are just a few things to be wary of. If I click on Chow Chow, or Sao Sao, it'll bring him up on the on the campaign here and bring up his army. And I, again, I can just uh, right click to open up his details. I can hover over him and it'll bring up a sort of, of some details on the left hand side. If I right click, it actually brings him up properly. And this is where the ancillaries come in. So you can see by here he has a weapon, armor, and mount. He has one, I got followers and accessories. And in brackets, I got one. I can give him a follower. So if I click on that, I can give him herdsman which will give him plus two resolve it enables wedge formation as well so if i want to use my cavalry effectively that might be something i want to give him so i can left click on that bring up the equip button click on that i know has that and it, it actually changes his character appearance which is something i really like that they've included in the game accessories i got two possible accessories i can give him we've got that axe which i mentioned earlier and also i've got uh, an area so it depends what i want to give him i can see his his stuff by here you got certain traits that he's ambitious he's dutiful but he is suspicious his expertise is out of 200 his resolves out of 200 all of his out of 200 uh anything i think he's low on so for example uh instinct he is on 45 out of 200 satisfaction he's on plus uh plus uh plus eight that would give him for satisfaction uh but instinct i said it's quite low so i might give him that if i left click to pin it and then equip that goes in as his instinct then goes up to 53 out of 200 so little things like that this is where the warhammer thing comes in where characters are important not so much on records mode but more so on this romance mode that's why i wanted to do the tutorial on this mode you can see he's level three starting off over time he will level up and you have a skill tree by here uh at the moment i got no points to apply but i can start clicking on things whichever way i want to go down my tree and it, you know you can get things like an enable mighty knockback for when he's fighting enables unbreakable very good thing to go for you know you can get a passive buff by here um for a decreased cooldown of abilities is minus five seconds you get plus four authority and cunning for a period of time you can get knife battles and fire arrows that sort of thing so whatever your your play style is or whatever way you want to go down the tree you can do that under your skills military wise again it tells you his current retinue and special units that only he can recruit 
So we can get Jean Sword Guard Cavalry and Tiger and Leopard Cavalry. And you know, it brings up his statistics there and his morale, melee charge, and that sort of thing as well, all down there. And then relations, so this is like a little tree. Anything that's green is good, anything that's red is bad. So Dong Zhou, of course he's the tyrant. Cao Cao hates him and it tells you why. Same with other characters then on this tree, like Yan Shao, for example. And then people that like us and tells us why. So Lady Bian, uh, basically because we're family and because of past events. Again, Cao Ren is family. Jia Hong Dun is family. Opinions battle, we fought side by side. And this is what I mean about fighting side by side and getting that opinion up. Opinions are important because if you've got somebody who hates you and they're part of your faction, for example, you could perhaps um, As I walk this take on somebody else's... As he interrupts me, you can take on somebody else's land via a, some sort of agreement. For example, we could take Leo Day. For, you know, that land could be assembled into our own empire, and then Leo Day might hate me for some reason, and then uh, will we'll hate me because of that, and eventually he might defect. So you've got to keep an eye on it, but that's just one of the things that you can sort of do um, in this in this game. Recruitment. So you can see that there's a recruitment thing, but it says by here you'll be able to recruit units next Chaos turn. Can't do it off the first turn. But you can in the future. So, that's resources. Faction summary, you click on this. So, this is quite interesting. So, second marquee is out of 50. And basically, if I get the second marquee, I get better credibility. I can have three armies rather than two. I get more slots for trade agreements, administrators, that sort of thing. And I'll have available spy as well. And then you go up to a marquee, you get more and more until you get up to an emperor which will unlock palace guard elite units and you get this by basically getting prestige you get prestige by doing things in the campaign that's the that's the crux of it anyway this is where we are right now with our prestige we're actually admirable which is quite nice that's our sort of credibility raked in by here so yeah interesting stuff our court click on court and you can see by here that I am, of course, the leader. My faction here is Xiao Pi, who's only a little baby, little baba, that's three years of age. I have no prime minister, chancellor, or anything like this. You will unlock these over time. If you hover over it, it tells you what you need to do. So, for example, for prime minister, this post is locked until you reach the faction rank of kings. Until I become a king, I can get prime minister. I got families and generals here. And again, it just brings you up, brings a little box down by here, and I can... Uh, I can click and put them into a post once the post becomes available. So that's how this sort of works. Nice that they got a nice family tree, nice and clear cut and easy to understand. Family tree is sure, she tells you, look, as you can see, uh, Lady Bian is, of course, Xiao Xiao's uh, wife, his partner, and together they've had two children, Xiao Yang, or Xiao, Xiao Yang and Xiao Pi. We've got some nobles by here as well in the family tree and then characters it brings up all the characters and again you get a breakdown of the tree people that like us are green people that hate us are red it gives you you can, you can toggle it by age by expertise by resolve and all different things so you can easily see like who is who's got the most authority you can see Cao Cao obviously does who has the least amount you got uh, Zheng Dong and just stuff like that so it's quite a useful sort of section the family tree is uh, Diplomacy is very important. One of the most important and revamp modes in this game is diplomacy. And what you can do, there's this sort of two ways you can do it. You can either just click on negotiate with the factions you already know, or you can do on quick deals. If I click on quick deal, it brings you up a bunch of things that are readily available for me. So I, I can probably end war with the faction. If I click on peace, I definitely can't get war with it, uh, get peace with any of these factions I'm currently at war with. Non-aggression packs. I might be able to get a non-aggression pack with Leo Day. You hover over him. His attitude towards me is plus 10 because I'm at war with his enemies. So that's a possibility. Military access. Again, Leo Day and Yuan Shao. And again, it tells you why. The treaties with us in the past and war with our enemies. And then trade agreement. Leo Day would definitely trade with us. So we might be able to get some good deals here. So what I'll do, I'll click on Leo Day. I'll bring him up. He's an underdog. It tells you he's poor. Whereas, you know, we've got a little bit of money and we'll probably get more money as the campaign goes on. If they are, if a, fa if a faction is really struggling and starving, this is where food comes in. Because you can trade, like, food and stuff like that. And that could be quite useful. So I'm going to click the negotiate button with Leo Deva here. And I want trade with him. He is probably going to say yes, so I can just sign that deal. Or I can negotiate the deal. 
I've checked on the ghost here because I'm going to try and get what I can with him. Anything that's green that's by here means that he's going to go for it. Um, it'll t tell you positive and negative factors. So his opinion on this deal is minus four, but the positives are minus, uh, oh, oh, sorry, are plus 5.5 because the trade is worth 2.3 positivity. And you can see there's a resource that's being traded as well, uh, which is, of course, going to be good. So we can do that. But I can actually say, do you know what? I want something else out of this deal as well. Maybe you should give me some money. So I request some money. And the more I increase this, you can see that deal is probably not going to work now. But bring it down. There's a sweet spot. And there we go. I can get probably a bit more, maybe. Nope. We go up and down. It does go between them slowly till I'm happy. I wouldn't go all the way to zero because, of course, there's, there's positive and negative factors here, which are very close. If I was to just take the money away, they're going to be a lot happier. And if I wanted to have a long-term ally with Leo Day, for example, especially early on, it might be a worthwhile thing to do because I've got the Han Empire to my south. That kind of consolidates my northern border. I might just go, yeah, you know what? Trade with you is going to be good. I propose it. It's been signed. Sound. And that makes him like me even more over time. It makes me trustworthy to him, and he's going to be happy enough. And then perhaps later on I can go, do you know what? Non-aggression, Pat, Leo Day, I quite like you. Let's negotiate. Are you willing to go to a non-aggression pact with me? Let's negotiate Good a bit to more. See you. And you can see by here, non-aggression pact. Now, he's not too keen on the non-aggression pact. So maybe I'll go in again and go, do you know what? I want to sweeten the deal. I will give you money for a non-aggression pact. And then I can try and work it until I get that green. I don't think it's worth giving him a lot of money for a non-aggression pact this early on. I've got a trade with him, so I'm not, he's unlikely to attack me. But so, but there's lots you can, you know, there's lots you can do. You can do a quick deal. Let's just um, confirm that. And just a quick deal and see what you can get. Gives you a list of factions that are nearby. Peace, no. Non-aggression pack, maybe, but I'll have to give him money to do that currently. But you can see now when I hover over him, there's more stuff going on there. It said plus 10 before. It's plus 22 now because we've got war with our enemies. We've got treaties with us and favourable deals with us. Because the deal with him was favourable because he's getting some resources out of the trade with us. That's going to go plus 2 every turn. So little things like that. The breakdown is very important. Military access, again, Leo Day and Yuan Shao are willing. So if I click on Leo Day, you might be willing to do this. If I negotiate the Welcome. deal, Come in. you can see he's actually not too keen. It'd take quite a lot of money, but in, you know, maybe in a couple of turns of time, he will go for that. So there's quite a lot you can do, and you can you can break it down by all sorts. You break it down by ownership, by attitude, diplomatic status. So grey being neutral, red being enemies, green being... Us, of course, wealth. So you know you can see who's the wealthiest. That sort of thing. Population, um, and and yeah, you can just break it down by food and also it's top of map map pins. You can see the pins from earlier as well. And these by here. So allies, we've got none. Vassals, we've got none. Trade partners, we've got the one. Uh, he's got the one with us rather. So so, and then you can see who is at war with. And then you can see the same with us then. So trade with Leo Day, and our stuff is on the left hand side. So that's what diplomacy is like. We've got a deal in there. And over time, you're trying to build relationships over time. That's kind of the aim uh, with it. So reforms is another thing I want to go through, which is this button by here with like the tree. It's a beautiful looking tree. And basically every few turns, it's like a tech tree from old Total War games. You just click on the one you, you think you need, you know, at the most present or a moment of time. Uh, if I wanted to go up a tree in a particular way, perhaps start here and go along or that sort of thing to get to this one. It, if you hover over it, it'll show you all the ones you have to get to get there. I only need to get sort of two to get there, pottery bricks and then rammed earth. Uh, you have to start off on one of them though. Obviously the ones we've got a lock by it need certain things to unlock it. For example, it tells you by here I need to have a certain building, that sort of thing. But yeah, you can start off, but I can't do it yet until three turns time. So once, once three turns have surpassed on the campaign map, I can actually start doing this. But it's basically a tech tree, like for example, register of land and population plus 15% income from peasantry, that sort of thing, plus eight military supplies. So they're all little things that will benefit you in your campaign. And that's how that works. And then we go along, we've got records. So this will tell you, uh, you can't really do it on the first turn, I suppose, but as you expand your empire, I might start off here, but I might take out, take out like 20 settlements or so 
in the next like 30 or 40 turns or whatever and you can just go through each turn press the play button and it'll just show you a nice little kind of um, time lapse of everything that's happened in the campaigns which is quite nice and it tells you each turn what happened and it's quite a nice little thing records so that's cool treasury for a further breakdown of your treasury you've got the income and the expenses what's costing you so much money what's bringing you in so much money so trade, you can see now with that, that trade I got with Leo Days bringing me 281 extra in. And you can now see that's gone from 600 odd to nearly 1,000. So that's brought in an extra sort of 300 or so um, gold per turn. So it was useful to get that in. And that's what you can do there. And that pretty much brings up all of this. There's a faction council, but you have to unlock that by obtaining a certain faction rank, which I showed you earlier. And it's the same as well with this... Uh, which is the spying sort of uh, section, the espionage, which you can't do at the start of the game, but that's what you would unlock by obtaining a certain rank, uh, like second marquee, for example. So now we're going to actually have a battle. So we start off here. This is Sao Sao's uh, main town of Chen. And if you zoom into it, it, bring, it brings you like a breakdown. So you can see it's our flag, it's our land. Our town tells you what it is, capital of the commandery. And if you hover over each thing, it gives you a population. So... 248,000 and tells you all the stuff that's in there. Current is, is 248k. I can have 300 max and you know you can upgrade it to get more benefits from that town or settlement. We're getting two food from it, which is what what's giving us the two food currently. Negative, so it tells you currently there's no effects from public order. Uh, hostile forces are giving us minus eight per turn. That's of course this enemy which is in our land by here, which we're going to be fighting in a moment. And this town is a rank two, hence the number two number right by it. And income, it's bringing me 171 in from peasantry each turn. So it gives you a little breakdown on the town. If I click on it, it brings up more. So you've got all of that information again around about by here. Uh, plus you've got the um, the other bonus stuff of the reserves so military supplies food balance that sort of thing but there it gives you the effects by here location effects building slots public order population growth that sort of stuff and also the fertility how much food production is how much income is from by here which is quite nice and then it gives you building slots so i can upgrade for 2000 gold and turn to a large town that would give me a better garrison it would give me lots of other cool effects if i right click for further information it tells me what a large town would do and yeah it's quite nice you can see different towns have different build slots they all cost different things for example an imperial city costs twelve thousand gold whereas a large town is going to cost two thousand gold i have three thousand gold starting off i can't recruit anybody on the first turn so what i'm going to do i'm going to go up to here where it says upgrade and i'm going to click on upgrade and that will make me a large town in four turns, where the little four is by the little arrow. And that will help things out nicely. Uh, where have you got the land registry office? That's not us. We've only got the town. Regretfully, autumn kills summer. But you can see by here, there's a construction slot here. I can construct new buildings. Where you've got the livestock farm, you'll and the farmland, you'll see there's two other faces here. They're both the Han Empire. That's because if you double click, it takes you to where it is. So the Han Empire has that one and also has that one. Both those lands are part of this kind of ecosystem. I have the town, but they have the farmland. I'm gonna basically try and drive them out from these farmlands and to take them out. And then I'm eventually gonna go for the small city as well to try and take the whole region basically. So that's how this, the system sort of works. Lots of farms, towns and cities that you'll find farmlands, that sort of thing. And you need to try and take them out. Oh my God, as my sub notifier, accidentally goes off mid video so i do apologize for any of you that are watching that got absolutely um scared by that but that was my sub notifier i've accidentally left my stream stuff on so apologies there but like i was saying that's what the situation is like with it comes to towns and cities and stuff these are two characters here so here's south south my general and here's the enemy yuan han China's but click on him demands merciless action so south south is here and next to him he has Another commander who's a general. He's a legendary champion. Champions tend to be the best in combat. So you want to send them in one-on-one -on -one if possible. And also a useful tip. You'll see up here. Toggle info overlay. That is one of the most, and I say this for any new beginner, the most important thing for anybody is this. If you click on it, it grays out 
everything and you hover over stuff it tells you everything faction summary campaign overview faction control what recruitment does what army actions are allowed what generals do and retinues at any at any point at all click on the i button the info overlay or f1 and it'll bring up everything and tell you what to do and everything so what we're going to do you can see i'm in normal stance i can change that to encamp or march and if you look at the effects it has just various different things but what we're going to do we're going to fight a battle here i've got him selected you can see the units that i have he's bringing four units here militia archers um some cavalry and some infantry and then uh Xia Hun Dun, my champions bringing some spears and stuff as well and what you're going to do when you hover over the enemy it's, the icon will the cursor will turn from an arrow to a sword you right click Attack! and that brings up the battle and it brings up this screen by here so you can see if i click on delegate that's basically what auto resolve used to be it's, it's called delegating this but um the generals of the army handle the battle without me fighting it basically and yeah we win that way and quick save if i wanted to beforehand or start the battle with our superior forces our advisors predict a decisive victory they are predicted to have high casualties whereas we are predicted to have low casualties and this first battle for any campaign is basically like a tutorial almost because you always basically win so we're going to click on start battle and i've just got achievement as well i haven't done a south south campaign yet chaos it's quite interesting Get through this chaos i have found opportunity these people these bickering people they stack so well it makes them easier to order, to control. I alone will bring peace to China. Those who stand against me will. There we go. So sorry to cut him off there, but you get that on the loading screen as well, which is quite interesting. This is the battle map, so I'm using WASD to move around. I can also use the cursor, um, the mouse wheel to go up and down, low and high. Um, but if you know, if you're unsure. If you go onto options uh, or press escape button to bring up the options, it tells you everything back here for controlling groups, armies, camera controls, everything. And look, there's some videos on here, help videos. New to Total War, New to Three Kingdoms, winning a battle or winning the campaign. It's all on here. I would advise any new player to check out these videos first and also check out these controls if unsure. But they're all it. I will try and talk you through some of it as well, basically. Over here in the red is the enemy, and you can hover over him and you can clearly see by here by zoom in what they look like 120 saber militia with more saber militia and then archer militia here and finally the general Juan Juan on his own I double click double click takes me back to my leader who is by here I also have my commander my champion on his horseback by here with all my other troops so I think I'm pretty happy with the formation there's lots you can do with them I can select them all like this I can drag in like this. So, for example, if I want a narrow formation, I can leave them like that. Or if I want to go really wide, hold down the right mouse button as you're controlling it like this and drop them like that. So, you can do that sort of thing. Control A. Control A can select them all. Um, so, you can do it that way as well. But you can bind the keys however you want to, basically. It's, it, the world's your oyster. You can control them however you want to. If I do put them into a formation, though, there are buttons I can do. So, I can click on formation. And it, 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 lots of different things you can do. So the crane's right wing, I can do that, for example. I can try perhaps the tiger's left claw. They've all got names. They all have certain things. You can see by the icons kind of what they do, like cavalry beyond the flanks, that sort of thing. I can put them all into melee or not. I can guard mode, tell them to stop when I give them a command. I can get them to run. I can withdraw if I think we're going to suffer lots of casualties. I don't want to die. I can toggle them to be on their mount or off their mount. Off the mount, back on. Fire at will. Skirmish, so the uh, miss missile troops will throw everything at them uh, first and will keep it at a safe distance, so like archers, that sort of thing. And I can automatically reject any proposed duels. Duels is going to be a thing I'm going to go through in this battle. So I'm just going to click the start button. This is what happens now. When the battle starts, you'll see there's a little timer by here. I can pause by clicking the pause button. Uh, but they it brings up the menu if I click pause. I got the play button. I can forward time, or I can do triple speed if I want the battle to go quick. And you can see the cursor at the bottom right. The time is going a lot quicker. So you can do that. 
as well if you so wish. I'm just going to play on normal speed, obviously. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on Control A. And I'm just going to press the arrow key and push the arrow key up so my troops can march. Now I can either press the R button or I can press this button here to run or walk. But I click that and you can see they're just walking at normal speed. This icon by here shows they're hidden. If it's an eye icon, it means the enemy can't see them due to hills, forests, that sort of thing. So use the map to your advantage, basically. It tells me how many soldiers I have, how many units I have, which are 10. That's eight infantry units, um, cavalry units, etc., and then two generals. And I can look at the info panel for them as well, which brings up their stats, their morale, effects and that sort of thing which is quite useful which is just this little button here or press the i button for it it also tells you the the weather fog the season is harvest and the climate is temperate so these are all little things which will have little statistical effects of your troops if i press the space bar it tells me where my troops are going very useful tip lots of people don't know this but holding on the space bar tells you where the units are going also holding on the space bar brings up this little menu on the right hand side very very useful I can toggle certain things off or on. Fog of war. Do I want the fog of war on or off? Or do I want it locked away? So you can do things like that. Character's aura. So if I turn that off, we'll have it on, for example. You know, things like that. It's quite useful. Do I want to have the 3D ignore depth on for that? Unit IDs. I want that on. Hero portraits. Unit uh, portraits. So you can see I've got unit portraits on there now. Whereas they're off before. So I can have that on if I want that on there. Unit threat level. I want that on there. Uh, which is quite useful. The threat level thing is really good because you can click over a unit and it'll tell you like how strong they are, that sort of thing. A very useful thing. I would say cinematic mode. Very useful basically press the K button and you've got everything on the screen as normal you press the K button and it turns it off like a cinema and if I hold it down with the mouse uh, scroll wheel I can just make you know videos like this like it's a real proper battle like a movie or something if I want to make those kind of videos I can just the K button and I can make some nice cinematics they're not gorgeous just the the cavalry marching towards us like this so yeah k button cinematic mode and here we go dual mode so the enemy is going to actually attack me i'm going to click to climb so the ai will offer to attack you so i'm going to click on my champion and i'm going to click on dual and then i'm going to i will crush you for this insult offer to attack the lord with it and here you go the young dual is engaged in single combat and now you can see what's going on with the duel by here. They go charging in. He's just taking him off the horse. Green is obviously you. Red's obviously the enemy. He's dismounted, and they're going to fight each other now by here, which is going to be lovely to see. Now they start fighting each other, and it'll tell you by here. You can run away, but if you do run away, then it'll um, give the battle certain effects and whatnot. That aura is the two of them where they are currently. With both the horses just standing Does there watching them fight. Wear you out? If only wars were won with witty words. If you hover over them, it tells you like, the effect. So I got more green than his red, so it's going well for us so far. And basically, if you kill the general, then the rest of the troops should probably flee. But we'll kill the general to begin with. And what we're doing while they're doing that, I will actually tell all my archers here. I click on him, little arrow pops up, right click, and then get him, or them rather, to start firing. And you can see my general, looks like he's going to take him out, my champion. What you can do, you can get another lord to do, then you can interrupt it, and that sort of thing if you want to. The AI troops are just kind of ignoring him while he has his little duel by here. My archers are just going to keep peppering the oncoming infantry. And you go, he's they fallen. No He'll get back on his horse now. And what I can do, I can basically say, right, we're going to fight these now. Get my troops. 
click on them you can click if you click on control a and then right click you'll set all your troops in do it that way there's archer militia here so i'm just going to tell my champion here to attack them because he is on horseback after all and they are going to end some shots away and attacking us look the enemy run and the enemy's running i told you this to be an easy battle than there is some basic controls though this button here is interesting though it's a special ability the champion has Go for the legs. it's called hamstring he loses um he loses some speed and he gets an increased cooldown of abilities but he does get splash damage you can upgrade this as you go along through the campaign and you can see i've got south south jumping in as well now my two lords are fighting they're going to butcher the rest of these archer uh, militia here um Oh, yeah, it's, no, it's so much you can do with it. It's ridiculous, really. Keep it up. That's right. Different things you can try out, of course. And we've won the battle. So just like that, we pretty much won the battle. What will happen is a little Look, icon will appear Great. on the screen by here, like that. Victory. And then you can claim victory, and it's done. You can either fight it again. You can save a replay end the battle we're just going to end the battle there decisive victory and it tells you a breakdown then how many men uh, against how many men and the amount of kills and stuff it's quite nice you get a little breakdown of the battle how long it took so about six minutes 54 and a little animation showing Sao Sao it is killing just him as it should be. we gained some money for that we gained 301 and it tells you then like the, the deployment and who won and you know how, who's remaining I captured 34 enemy for example my prestige has gone up a little bit because of it as well so I can get the 113 income by ransoming and get military supplies or I can get replenishment I'm just gonna get the income because money's they always good but it's up to you wherever you are in your campaign you might want to get that and there we go that mission was successful so because of that i got the benefits as well taste of victory which will give me military supplies and morale and that mission is done the banner of war is raised and south south marches so you can see now we've got another mission which is uh, chen the livestock farm which i pointed out earlier and it's basically saying for me to capture and occupy it and i'll get support from the people for three turns which will give me a public order boost and faction wide support so that would be a natural target to go for Glorious victory, so this victory is just the beginning, so I got bonus experience for Sao Sao of 1750. And you can see if I hover over him, his current XP is nearly 11,000 out of 16. Once he gets to 16,000 XP, he levels up, so you've got very much an RPG element to the game as well, as a strategic element, and these are all the things then which you've seen. Gain some ancillaries again though, we've got a professional raiment for expertise, which is uh, an armour for him basically, or any of my other lords as well so yeah that's basically it i know there's a lot more to it but for, certainly for a new player a beginner to this game i think this answers most of the questions there are things to go through here so missions this brings up the mission log i've only got the one so far characters i've shown you down by here click on them or right click on them and it brings up their details armies so if i've got more than one army they'll all be listed here commanders so, uh, step or commanderies rather, uh, are here. So, I got Chen at the moment, but if I get more, I can know uh, caps them as I go throughout the game. And then we've got known factions, it brings up a list of the ones that like us and hate us. And again, you can do it by love and hate. So, uh, Yellow Turban Rebellion, uh, not love and hate, sorry, but yeah, love and hate by here. So, Yan Chao likes us, Dong Zhou hates us, and then military strengths you can see by here. They have strength compared to us is negligible, so I should be able to take up the Han Empire and the Yellow Turban Rebellion quite easily, whereas if I went head to head with Dong Zhou right now, I'd probably lose. So those little things as well. You can bring up the map as well. You can point north, so you can click on that to point you north. Toggle the radar zoom as well. And if I want to pin something, I can pin something. I can create a custom pin. I can right click. So for example, if I said to myself, right, I want to go for an enemy up here, I can create a custom pin. Um, and pop it there. I can fit an image for it so I can say, do you know what? Uh, a naval thing. I'm going to pin it and say naval village or something. And that might be something which I want in my head. Um, I could put on the uh, target, for example. So that's me saying, do you know what? Up here is naval village. 
I'm going to pin it because I want to go for that later in the campaign. I know you can create custom pins, you can cancel them at any time, just click on the, the X. Same with all of these, you can take all the existing ones off uh, if you want to as well, just like that. And that is pretty much it for the basics. I do hope I've explained things very well. If you are a brand new Total War player that's playing Total War Three Kingdoms for the first time, I hope you enjoy it. It's a very good game. They've certainly improved things a lot with the diplomacy. And I hope that you get a lot out of this game. I'm enjoying it so far. I think it's great. I think they've taken a step in the right direction. And I hope this video helps all of you as well. If it has, I would love it if you could drop a like on the video. It means a lot to me. I've been Dragonheart. Until next time, goodbye.